Hey, today we're going to talk about parallel and serial routing. Um, what it is, why you'd want to use it, and then how you'd actually put it into function. Most people, when they look at a preset, um, this is the way they think. And these, this is a signal chain completely in serial. So basically, you come out of your input, your guitar comes into the input, then you go through each effect in order, one into the other, through the amp and cab, out through the reverb, and then the output. Um, one of the things that people look at this and it makes sense. So when you go and you look at something more along the lines of, say, this, it starts getting confusing. Well, what exactly is going on here? This doesn't seem to make sense. So what I'm going to do um, is just get a blank preset up and basically show you what's going on. So if we put a shunt in here and then run it across, this creates a signal path. So you've got your basically the same thing we saw before, the input coming in through signal path and going to the output. Serial, one block feeds another. Now there's nothing in this, but it, it'll serve to illustrate a purpose when I do it like this. Now if I create this, and feed it from here. I've got my guitar coming into the input through this block, which feeds this block. Now I've increased the level of what's going to come out down here because I have two separate signal paths. And if I run it like this, it'll make it even more apparent. Even if we don't have this connection here. So basically now I've got two paths running from my input to my output. They are running in parallel to each other. Obviously you have two parallel lines. So when you look at a preset like one of mine that has these sorts of different things, now they're not two lines running in parallel, but the effects here are running in parallel to the main line that runs here. And then I do this, I move this to illustrate it better for you to kind of, you can see better what's going on. I'm coming in through the input. I run through these in serial. These effects here are running in parallel to those. So one of the things that we, when we look at when we're talking about parallel and serial routing is why would we use it? Um, in the good old days when we just had amps and combos and effects, um, you'd add effects, you could add effects um, in serial, of course, but that would impact your dry tone, your, your what you'll call your raw tone. Um, when you could run those in parallel with the amp, you could record your raw tone, then you could add your effects after in the studio, uh, and you could do that in parallel. You'd be adding them, strictly adding them to that raw tone. You wouldn't be subtracting them. Um, Nowadays, we have things like the Axe Effects where we can run everything in just the digital domain. So some of that um, impact is lost in terms of what we need to do because we're not going to hurt our raw tones by routing our effects parallel or serial. So when people get into the conversation like which is better, really there isn't anything better about it when you're strictly in the digital domain um, what is cool with parallel in the digital domain is it gives you a tremendous amount of flexibility and versatility um, with how you can route those effects and why. So let's look at some of them. Um, if you look at something like um, this column right here, the chorus and the flanger are running in parallel to the dry tone. Um, one of the nice things about parallel is it's strictly adding to the sum. So you're only adding an effect to your dry tone. When you route serial, essentially you have one effect feeding the other in line and then how you have the mix set determines how much it is and sometimes you can get into level issues with the output of different effects. Um, parallel removes that aspect of it um, but that's not the biggest part of why you would want to run them. 
if you look at the way this is routed, when that signal comes through, it feeds the chorus. Let's turn the chorus on. Well, let's hear it real quick without anything. Um, so I've got my delay level down here. The input gain is down at zero, so there is none. When you look at my reverb, uh, I've got that up. Obviously, I don't know, let's say 75%, roughly 70%. So what you're hearing in essence is everything that's grayed out really isn't in the chain at all. You're hearing the input come into the amp, the cab, uh, feeding a little bit of that delay into the reverb, or not even feeding the delay because it's not on right now, but just the reverb. <laughs> Now, when I come in and I look at the flanger and the chorus, um, I don't usually run them at the same time. I wouldn't do that, but I wouldn't if I did for whatever reason. I'd never would want them feeding one another. To me, they're sort of the same sort of effect. Uh, they're modulation based. I wouldn't want them to interact with each other. So I don't want to feed my flanger into my chorus, and I don't want my chorus to go into my flanger. So what I can do is if I did want to run them at the same time, um, I could do something like route them in parallel. So what I'm going to do is add them to the signal um, independent of each other. <laughs> So what that does is it allows me to add both without them interacting. Um, that is where parallel routing, especially in the axe effects with the grid presented, gets very sophisticated. So if you actually look at the way this is routed, I could actually run my phaser at the same time, and none of them are going to interact because of how the routing will happen. So I could have all three of these modulation effects on, and they're not going to interact with each other. They're just going to be added to the dry signal. So because of the power of the grid, you're allowed to do different things. Like these three effects obviously don't interact, but this in essence would be pretty much the same if I ran it this way. Now when you run these paths like this, when you bypass these effects, you run the chance of increasing your gain. Now, one of the things you have to do when you route in parallel versus routing in serial is you have to flip your thinking around. When something is routed in parallel, you're going to want to run it at 100% wet, which is turning that mix up to 100%. You're going to add how much of it you want with the level and then you're going to have to change your bypass mode and this is extremely important to anything other than through if you run these as through when you turn them off your entire signal level will be much louder because in effect you're doubling the number of lines that come through and it sums them when you get back to your raw guitar tone so if these were all set to through and I'll do I'll do that real quick show you this is going to clip and it will be nasty and you won't like me for this so let's bypass these and all of a sudden that same thing is well, it didn't clip because I have enough headroom but when I change now I take those same effects and I just mute them on the I want to mute it doesn't matter. Mute. Anything other than through is what you got to have. Um, so let's get in and do it. Now listen to the level. It's cool. So that's the big key of how to run in parallel. You just route it that way in the grid. You change your mix to 100%. You adjust how much you want with your level and then you set your bypass mode to anything other than through. One of the really cool things about running things in parallel is you can do things you're not supposed to do or you're not supposed to be able to do and it actually sometimes works out really well. 
I had a situation with an, with an artist where he wanted less wah than when you routed serially. Um, the wall block in the axe effects does not contain a mix parameter. He wanted less wah on his effect, and it struck me I could just use parallel routing to do that. And then I ran into a situation on some of the material I have to cover where I needed to run a tremolo at the same time I ran a wah. And when I ran those just in series, the tremolo overwhelmed the wah and the wah got lost because of the tremolo. I needed a very strong tremolo effect. So when I route it this way, I can have both. I'm really only adding as much wah as I want to it when I run it in parallel, which is cool. And then the trim is on. <laughs> And then one really neat thing about the Axe Effects is I can control all of these things in real time on the fly. I actually have the trim set to tempo, which I can tap in. I can do it here in the editor, or I can do it on my footboard in the middle of a gig on the fly. And then the wah, obviously, you'd control with an expression pedal. Um, but one of the cool things that I do in almost all of my effects on the Axe Effects is I can control the level of wet and I can do that with my foot and I can do it on the fly. So I'm going to turn the wah off. I'll do it on the editor so you can see it. But I have the trim on right now. Now watch what I do with the depth over here. You can see I've attached it to a controller and I have an external two and everything else is stock. So when I use my foot on that expression pedal, you'll see the dial. The number won't change, but the dial will, and it'll show you how much is in there. So what I can do are things like this. And that's kind of cool, and everybody can kind of see the benefit of that. It's pretty simple, I think, for people to understand. But what's really, really, really cool is I can do all of that with multiple effects at once with one foot controller all attached to that same exact expression pedal. So I wouldn't do this normally. You'll see the level control changes. What's neat about that is I find it just feels much more natural and organic and it isn't that unnatural things you can get sometimes when you just turn groups of things on or off all at once. Um, there's different ways to do all of this in the XFX, but that's pretty cool. And I'll just stop real quick and add this in even though it's really not part of this. One of the things I do on this in terms of expression pedal is I change the max and the minimum. The max I'm ever going to want is at unity level and I don't go minimum which is normally uh, maxed at minus 80. I have it at minus 30 because I find that's pretty much out. But as you can see as I rock that pedal and I crank it up which is what the ball over here is doing on the graph. I'm just basically taking it from minus 30 dB up to zero, and that's the max. Now I can set that independently on each effect, and that's kind of a really cool, neat, interactive thing. So in conclusion, really what I wanted to get at today was the, the basic choice is up to you with something like the Axe Effects to run in parallel or in series, where you put them in the chain. I could very easily grab this. And I'd have to redo my routing, but you'd get the picture. But now I have the same thing as I had before, but now it's after my amp and cab. And it's very simple to do this sort of thing.
and it's completely up to the individual. And the XFX makes that sort of thing really easy to do. And I really, really, really kind of enjoy that. So I hope you get something out of this video. Um, you can, I would appreciate it if you did like the video, you found it useful, you click like. Uh, you can subscribe to my channel. I'm going to be doing videos like this uh, consistently. And I hope it helps you out. And I hope it was uh, interesting to you. Thanks very much.